everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, I want to start off today with, I wanted to give you a little better view of our next giveaway. Uh, this is for all of those collectors who have uh, sent in their collection for collection review, past and present. There are only two people who are not eligible. Uh, one is Art and one is Clark because they already want to watch. Uh, this is an automatic, uh, skeletonized. Anyway, um, so if you're interested, uh, we're going to be giving this away in April at the one year anniversary of Watch Art Side. Okay, um, what I want to take a look at uh, first here is this wonderful watch uh, that uh, Tony Abade has. It's a Glasshudi Original. Panomatic Lunar. It has a moon phase on it. It's got a beautiful blue dial, blue strap, um, hours, small seconds, and a subdial. The back of it is absolutely gorgeous. You can see the caliber 9002 movement in it. <laughs> it's got a, a 21 karat gold oscillation weight. This is a real beauty of a watch. Uh, the list price in the stainless steel is $11,500. I think the gold uh, version of it was about $23,000. However, I found it condition zero, brand new for $7,000, a little over $7,000. So, uh, Tony, uh, thank you very much for letting us uh, show this gorgeous watch of yours. Okay. Um, Let's get, uh, get to work on our trying to come up with a ranking system or a rating system for watches that is objective to get us away from the hyperbole of advertisement and marketing and so forth and just take a look at what a watch is made of. Now, we have these criteria that are set up, craftsmanship, movement, uh, materials, innovation, production, GPHG awards, operational quality, and history of a watch. Now, of these, in our discussions, came up that said, well, mm, the GPHG awards are probably not something we should use. Well, first of all, uh, let me explain why they were included. I, I don't consider myself uh, an expert on watches. I'm a collector, <laughs> okay? But I do rely on experts to tell me what is really good. Not a salesman. Uh, salesmen are good at sales. I know that. I've sold stuff myself. I had when I had my uh, well, I still do. So to my publishing company, I had to deal with a lot of people with, with books and so forth. But uh, here, the GPHG awards, the Grand Prix awards, are by the best experts in the world. And if they say a watch is good, I think we ought to listen to them. Now, most of them I can't afford, but some I can. And in fact, I have two. Uh, one I can't afford. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at the um, uh, one of the most controversial decisions uh, recently that was made. Uh, and this was in the, um, the sports category uh, of 2016. This was last year. So th the first thing I want to do is it, let's take a look at the watches that somebody entered for, for an award. Uh, there were, I think, a total of 11. Um, and what I did is that all of the judges, I'm giving you the same values that the judges had. Okay, now this is important because sometimes, you know, there's, you see advertised prices are all over the map. Um, so we're, we're going to take the ones that were actually used. I converted them from Swiss francs into dollars. And um, the Chris Franks are pretty close to dollars and euros. So, okay. Uh, first of all, there was the uh, Alpina that was the least expensive of the watches. By the way, these are in alphabetical order. This is the order that um, uh, the Grand Prix has them in. Um, this was fifteen ninety five. Uh, the next was uh, the Eberhard. Uh, this was twenty five sixty seven thousand twenty five hundred dollars. Next one is a Greco. It was twenty-eight twenty-five. The this one is hard for me to pronounce. It's GV Givani. Uh, 
watches. An unusual looking watch, very creative looking. Uh, 9530. Okay, um, the next group of entries it was a Mont Blanc from 37, almost $38,000. Uh, one called the Rescence uh, it was also about thirty thousand dollars, twenty nine nine fifty. Um, the Monza Hoyer, uh, this is a Tag Hoyer, forty seven sixty five. The Tudor, uh, this is a Black Bay Tudor Black Bay, uh, and this is the one with uh, the in house movement, uh, forty one thirty three. Okay, and the final three. This big, gorgeous Ulysse Nardin, uh, it's $272,000, my God, <laughs> it was sort of way up there. Um, Zenis, uh, which is about roughly um, close to $7,000, this is probably one of my favorite, the uh, Zenis was. This other one, this last one is a ZRC, one I hadn't heard of before. They did something interesting with this watch, they had a, they had this special watery, uh, a freshwater, uh, saltwater removal thing because there was salt getting caught between the bezel and the and the case, and so some of the divers who were using it said, "Hey, can you do something about that?" So they invented this thing to put in there. I thought that was kind of cool. Okay, uh, so now we take a look at the finalists, and um, there are six of them: the Eberhard Mont Blanc, Resens, uh, Tag Heuer, uh, Tudor, and Ulysse Nardine. Okay, the winner is of the 2016 Grand Prix Sports Watts category was the Eberhardt Scassograph 300. Now, a lot of people say, ah, this was, you know, what's going on? <laughs> this was me. I was Captain Obvious. This thing's got an ETA in it. It looks like every other diver's watch and sports watch. So how could they have possibly won? Well, um... <laughs> what am I going to do? Well, so I called one of the judges, a guy I know who's a judge, and I said, you know, <laughs> what did you guys choose the Everhard for? He said, you know, he said it, it has a lot of features in it, and there's another one we didn't see, the uh, helium release valve. Now, know that the helium release valve was developed by Doxa and uh, Rolex some years ago, so I mean, uh, that's nothing new. It's got, it does have an ETA in it. He said, well, he said it was the, it was the price. They put this together for $2,600, which was a fraction of the price of every other watch that was in the finalists. I guess the Alpina didn't have anything going for it. It got kicked out right away. But he said, this one was a, is a well-made watch. It was um, uh, good materials. And it does what it's supposed to do. It's a genuine, functional, well-priced diver's watch. He said, that's why it's one. He said, he said that Elise Nardine is a gorgeous watch for a yacht. The thing cost as much as a yacht did, $272,000. He said, you know, with, for that kind of money, you can do a lot with a watch. You can make it magic. You can tell you who's going to win the World Cup. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a lot to that. So well, it really came down to all things considered. Now, to me, if you look at the history of the Sports Watch Award, uh, what you'll find is a lot of, I, I think that the people at the Grand Prix consider those to be sort of where you can have the lower cost watches. This is sort of the lump and proletariat of watch collectors like we are that you, know, you have some of these lower price uh, watches. Okay, so uh, so the, the the thing that that when I was acting like Captain Obvious is that you realize first of all all of those judges realized all of those things. I mean, like of course they knew it was an ETA. Of course they knew that there was you know there was the the features of it were nothing new or nothing special. They knew that. And so it must have been something else. And that something else was that they were able to do it for that price. So, okay. So this is, this is why I think it's important to consider what these ex world experts have to say about these things. Okay. So, all right. So that's how come they're in the measures. <laughs> 
all right, so what I did, I said, oh, all right, well, we got to work on this thing. We, we got to have more discussion on the measurements. And so I wrote a little program um, and uh, put it up on our, <laughs> I put it on our university server because uh, we had the latest version of uh, the software I was using. Okay, um, here's what I'd like you to do. Okay, this has, you can practice on this. And you can, you can come to understand a little about the measurements. And then the next thing we got to do is the hard part. This part is relatively easy in this sense, is that most data, no matter what we do to it, is really nominal, which means that it's, there are some differences, but we have no idea of what the actual numeric differences are. So this was done with a, a dichotomy. It either had a feature or it didn't have a feature. And so in the program, it was either worth one or zero. Now there was the only exception was that, and I did this for the brand and not for the watch, is the Grand Prix Awards that the company has, which will tell you a lot about the company, that the, the process that it goes through. Everything else, they either had it or they didn't. Now what we're gonna have to do later on is to figure out the value of each of these. And we can use numeric descriptions, but they're descriptions and not real numbers. And so, but to get started and in a way that we're actually either having a feature or not having a feature, this is, I thought this might be good for that. Well, let, let me run through what I did with my Harbring 2. Harbring 2, Felix, craftsmanship. The uh, master watchmaker was crafted. Yes, uh, Richard uh, Harbring. Uh, the movement in-house. Um, the materials, precious metal or steel. It was steel. Uh, innovation. I don't think in this particular case there was there was probably certain things that were done by Richard Harbring that I have no idea, but I didn't I didn't really see them in it. Um, so that had I put no for that. Uh, production. Part of the production process requires handcrafting. Yes, and this one <laughs> certainly was. Um, the how many uh, Grand Prix have the ones? One, three for this little bitty company. Um, operational quality, amazing. Uh, that thing I tested it with my uh, time grapher and my my little gizmo that uh, uh, Freddie Fre Frederick Constant has, and that thing is uh, loses less than five seconds or fewer uh, per day. Now I put there at the end there it says. Uh, uh, one year after service or uh, from new. If When you get a brand new watch, it comes right back from service. Yeah, it's going to be within five seconds a day. If it's not, you've got real problems. But after a year, if it's still doing good, that means that's a very good operational quality. History. Company is 100 years or more in operation. Harboring 2 has only been around, I don't know, 20 something years maybe I don't even, not even that long maybe 10 years um, so no it doesn't have the history okay so then I hit the button at the bottom and it comes up with my harboring to Felix had a score of seven all right now what I'd like you to do if you would take your watches take your collection just run it through there and see what what you come up with okay because what I'm hoping that this will do will give us say let's so let's think about this let's rethink about it and Find out whether these are the best criteria, the best measures, what we need to do to them. And so we come up with a really neat uh, way of measuring things. Okay, now we'll come back to this week after next. Next week, I got a special thing for you. Had an interview uh, with a guy who sells watches in a place that is usually known for <laughs> really getting great deals. And uh, we'll have that. And I also had another interview. I, uh, the one was I recorded, and the other one is uh, I did through email. So um, week after next, we'll return on this, and so play around with it. And your comments are the most important. You can see from what I did here, I took your comments into consideration. Your comments are in there, <laughs> believe me. And so I'd love to hear from you guys, and then play around with this thing, and uh, also to. The URL is sort of hard to read the way I have it up there, so I put it uh, down below um, where they have the descriptions and stuff of this particular video.
Okay. See you guys Sunday with our next collection review. And then I'll see you next week, next Friday. Bill Sanders for Watch Art Sale. By the way, too, if you like to subscribe, you're more than welcome.